if it wasn't for Evan Lozado being on Basketball Wives, the thought of casting a Latina in general for Love & Hip Hop probably would have never been a thought. Welcome back to my channel, mother suckers. Hey, did y'all see this one hour interview with Erica Mena? I skimmed through it, but I did get the gist of the interview. She sat down with Carlos King and did a full interview about her upbringing, um, which led to a part two that was not released yet, where she talks about the incident with Spice. Now, as you all know, Erica was fired from Love & Hip Hop after she called Spice a racial slur. Spice mentioned Erica's son not liking her, and production had to separate the women during the altercation when Mena flipped the table and continued to call Spice a blue monkey. But during the interview with Carlos King, viewers couldn't help but notice how much darker Erica's skin has gotten. Was it a spray tan? Did she go on vacation? Is she trying to garnish sympathy for the darker skinned folks because she called someone a monkey? Like, what's going on? During the interview, Erica discussed her childhood and how she was raised in foster care, where her anger originally stemmed from which was her broken family and broken relationship with her mother child she brought up the affair that she had with dj envy again i mean if i had a dollar for every time erica mena did an interview and brought up dj envy i would be wealthy at this point okay but i do think the timing of this interview is very interesting now with everything coming out with dj envy's legal situations and then erica mena doing this interview child envy is having the worst year of his life and that's why it is very important in men when you go before God and vow to be loyal to your wife that you do that okay because your wife may forgive you but you still got to reap what you've sown and someone on Twitter made an interesting observation and said it's been 10 years since Erica Mena and DJ Envy had the affair and they're both reaping their karma in 2023 very interesting observation but yes she is standing on the hill that she did not know he was married and honestly if you didn't know he was married but you was messing with a married man i mean i think there would be a little bit of shame and embarrassment behind that this is why i say bring back shame especially after what safari put her through it, it doesn't seem to be any type of remorse when she discusses dj envy and his wife but moving on the big elephant in the room is how does she feel about spice like how does she feel about the racial remarks that she made towards spice calling her a monkey and her pattern of calling dark-skinned black women monkeys and i don't really want to hear oh she just called her a monkey it wasn't racist because she only says it to dark-skinned black women and so you won't hear her calling a Latina woman who looks like her a monkey. You will never hear that. And this has been a trend with a lot of the lighter skinned Latina women on these reality shows, Evelyn Lozada, Cardi B. You know, they always make reference to black women in colorist undertones and racist undertones and then say, well, I was just mad. So that's what I said as a diss because I was mad. Well, if someone brings up your child, yeah, you have the right to come back at them. Why always go towards looks and skin tone and race when arguing with black women because in reality you do feel superior to them you do feel like you look better than them you do feel like you have better hair than them i mean she's literally said all of this on podcasts on live streaming platforms so this is nothing we're making up this is nothing new and she said that Mona was looking for another Evelyn Lozada, a quote unquote spicy Latina from the Bronx. Hindsight 2020, they both end up making colorist and racist remarks toward dark skinned black women on the show. But like I said, I really tuned into this interview to see what she had to say in regards to her recent monkey comments. But that's supposed to be happening in part two, so I'll let y'all know what happens over there when that drops. Let's get into some of the comments. Most of the comments was not here for Erica Mena and this whole um, press tour. Someone said, I just cannot find it in me to feel Erica is genuine, like not even a little bit. Healing is a major part of life for us all. Erica needs to heal. Someone else said, she's really trying to paint the picture that she's cultured, exposed to diversity, and not racist. That's her entire angle. This interview would have worked in her favor if she admitted to her wrongs first and then started telling these stories, which I do agree with. She kind of just jumped into, okay, when I was a baby, I was in foster care, and then we have to wait for part two. Like, no, I want, I want, I want to hear it now. Colorism and racial slurs are so prevalent in some Latino homes. It's terrible, it's hurtful, it's degrading, especially because we all come in so many beautiful shades of love. We need to start from home to make changes for some of us. I agree. 
But y'all let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. Now that racism and colorism is a spotlight conversation on these shows, child, a lot of people are gonna be getting the ax, okay? This is my first time addressing the Erica Mena and Spice issue on my channel, so feel free to let me know down in the comment section. How did you feel about that argument between the two ladies? Do you feel like Erica was justified because her son is a very sensitive topic for her? Do you think it's fair game during an argument to say whatever you feel like saying, no matter the isms? Let me know your thoughts. I'll be reading. Like, subscribe, and I'll see y'all later.